Perfect. So Perfect. thank you for your patience. Yeah, we had to get used to the new um the new Facebook stuff. It's all technology. Okay, so I think we're ready to go officially get started. And so yes, yeah, so for those who are just tuning in, I guess I'll officially introduce myself now. <laughs> for those who are just tuning in, my name is Akira. I am a brand cultivating strategist, a professional photographer, an author, as well as a cancer survivor. And um, I love people, right? So today I'm going to be sharing my part of what I know about love languages and enneagrams and the importance of, um, you know, valuing relationships, especially um, woman relationships, right? Because that's the most undervalued thing Yeah. that, you know, but I mean, not only women, but of course men, you know, we just have to be able to maturely handle conflict in relationship because they're bound to come up they're bound yes. to come up yes 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 and you know i love when women approach relationships from the standpoint of sisterhood because really and truly it's it's not at all competition it's really just a sisterhood and helping each other out along the way you know um and so what Zakira and I are doing, you know, we're also trying to demonstrate this um, sisterhood as a part of preserving relationships. So this is also interwoven into what we're going to talk about today, you know, um, supporting each other and rooting for each other. This is something that we do. So thank you what very you much do? for joining us. I am <laughs> Tabitha and I am a conflict manager. What I do is I give leaders actionable strategies to resolve and manage conflict and restore relationships and align talents, align their talents. So think of a conflict manager like a fireman. You never want to fire, but when there is one, you're very, very glad that the fireman is around. And so that's what I do. I help people out fires when there are conflict hotspots and things that need to change and there's need for a change management process. I help people with that process. I, I just give them strategies that they can use in the situations that they're in so that they can get conflict resolved, get it managed. And you are the perfect person for that. I mean, not only is it just because we're friends, we're good friends, we literally know each other from uh, a, a course called 1K One Day. Yeah, we happen to live right around the corner from each other. Yeah. But also, I mean, uh, also because of the vibe. Yes, indeed. So I think um, now is a great time to talk about what mental health is, what mental wellness is, because I feel like that's what people need to understand first. So what do you think is the best, what would you define is the best definition of mental wellness? Well, the best one that I found for mental wellness was from AmericanMentalWellness.org. And I just want to make a distinction to our friends listening and watching that I am not a mental health professional. However, I am a very strong supporter of mental health and mental wellness. And so you hear me talk about mental wellness more than mental health for the duration of our podcast today. And the definition that I liked comes from the resource AmericanMentalWellness.org. And they use the definition that they got from the World Health Organization. Mental wellness is defined by the World Health Organization as a state of well being in which the individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her own community. I love that definition because it speaks to the knowledge that stress is normal. There are normal stresses in life and mental wellness finds us in a state where our well-being allows us to cope with those normal stresses. And so that's where Zakir and I are gonna talk today about 
coping, coping with those normal stresses of life. Yes. And so for me, I think I'm going to talk about what I know, know most about. Um, I mean, I love astrology, but also I've been learning about um, something called Enneagram. Um, and I learned to find out there's, the number is one through eight. And each number is a different personality type. But each personality type is very specific as far as how you handle life on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. So I did a few a little bit of Test. So there is a website that we'll definitely include um, in the comment section and our show notes that uh, you can find out your own Enneagram. But Tabitha, do you know what yours is before I tell I you mine? I do. I what do know is? what mine is. I am a type nine. I'm a really? Enneagram type nine. Yes. I discovered okay. Enneagram maybe about a year or two ago. I found it really interesting. Um, I was able to get exposure to it from a Christian perspective which is the one that I am most comfortable with. And so um, the reading that I did from that Enneagram coach teaches you how to find out your type first. In a state of calm and things are going well. And we also have a conflict style when we're in a state of storm, when things are a little stormy. And so answering those questions tell you whether what your conflict style is when you're in calm and what it is when you're in storm. And that education helps you to tweak how you react to conflict and your behavior so that you can enter into a situation, show up as your best self and come out of it with a resolution. So the first conflict style that the Institute talks about is directing. And that is something that's very easy to recognize. That conflict style is something that you hear a lot from parents. You hear it in workplaces. Um, and it sounds like this. Let's do it my way. Or let's just get the job done and then we'll figure out the other stuff later. Or it could sound like this. Look, right now we, we need to meet this goal we're gonna worry about the relationship part later, but let's just meet this goal. It's a very pressing one. And the directing conflict um, style doesn't, very, doesn't focus on relationship very much. It's very, very low on, on relationship focus, very high on the agenda. So those would be your people who want to get the job done, want to stick to the agenda, want to move through from point to point. And, it's very, very good in cases where there's a crisis. Think about an accident. You want someone with a directing conflict style managing things there because that person is going to direct you. Let's go here, let's do this and bring order very quickly to a crisis situation. But then if there's a meeting and you're trying to build relationships, the Directing person might struggle a little bit in that area. So that's your directing conflict style. Another one is avoiding. And that's also easy to recognize. And this is what it sounds like. Now look, let's just forget about this, okay? We can, we can do this another time. Let's forget about this. Or the, the, the avoider would say, conflict? What conflict? There, there's no conflict here. Um, we, we can just deal with the situation and, and get it done. There's no conflict here. A little better. And we understand what's happening with COVID-19. And please tell me yours. That way, I'm expressing what my preference is. And then I'm cooperating with Zakira. I'm asking her what her preference is. And then we're going to see where are we going? And if we explain, if each of us explains in that conversation what we want and we keep talking, it's easier to work out a way for both of us to come out with what we wanted. Because let's say we were talking about going somewhere at the end of June and one of us was a little worried about what's happening, what the COVID um, coronavirus stats look like. We don't know if it's safe as yet. If I'm directing, I would just say, oh, Zakira, well, look, we're just going to go because we need to speak at that conference. We need to get this done. If I'm avoiding, I would say, Zakira, let's talk about this another time. 
and then I could just wait and watch the rates because I don't want to enter into a discussion with you and have this conversation back and forth. It wears me out. I just want to run away from it. Yes? If I'm harmonizing, I would ask you what you want to do, what you think about going at the end of June, and I would agree with you. So here I'm flexible. Whatever you want to do. June? End of June? Yeah. End of July? Sure. Let's do that too. You know, and going in compromising, if we're talking about it and I say, Sakira, what about us going somewhere at the end of June? We're going to that speaker conference we talked about. And you say, Tabitha, I'm not so sure about that. I want to wait until September. The compromising Tabitha would say, all right, Sakira, let's make a deal. Could we go in August instead? without exploring why you asked, why September was good for you, and without sharing with you why the end of June is also good for me, see? But cooperating would find us both talking about it, what your preference is, what mine is, and then we would each explain why it's important, and who knows what comes out of that, an agreement that takes care of all of our needs and priorities. I love all those tips, really. And I was literally just thinking about um, how I've experienced or been one, like one of five or all of five at one yes. point. So, yes. You know, we all, we all are like that. We all have, you know, adjusted differently. So there are definitely ways of avoiding such a style and treatment. There are definitely ways of, um, you know, negotiating or making deals, there's definitely ways of um, my way or the highway, you know, yes. it's also very, very, very common. Yes. So, you know, and I think that that's what, um, that's what mostly causes, I think we briefly talked about this in our, in our part one, in the podcast episode, um, yes. number 46 of that's only what causes divorce, causes divorce, causes yes. the separation of friendships very yes. close friendships you know it's just some some one kind of conflict um wasn't being addressed in a way because this is also going back to know your love language know your anagram because if it's not addressed in the way that you are as you know you are personality wise it can cause a conflict yes it can yes it can and that's why we we tie it to self-care that has nothing to do with you and everything to do with the person who's saying it. So I would say, go and take care of yourself by talking with a professional who can give you tools, reinforcement, and just help you to get through a period of time. And just like you, the third thing that helps me secure is support from my inner circle of friends because Friendships are very affirming and very nurturing to me. My Enneagram type really does like to get the affirmation from friends, from people who I trust. And learning and understanding that there's not everything that is going to be resolved. Life is made of conflict. Life is made up of conflict. And as long as we're blessed to be alive, we are going to meet it. And when we have tried and we, we see conflict that we can't resolve, think about how we preserve relationships and ask ourselves, we can ask ourselves things like, how much does the relationship matter to us? It can help us to either let it go or level up and work on the conflict. Are we physically or mentally able to do the work on the conflict? If not, get some support from your doctor, from a therapist, from your spiritual leaders. Get some support in the areas that you're not able to, to handle so that you can show up physically and mentally able to do the work on the relationship. Are you able to take a neutral view? If not, then you might want help from someone who manages conflict or resolves conflict, you might need help from a neutral person, a mediator, a conflict manager to help you work your way through that and give you tools. 
ask yourself, is there trust? Is there trust between you and that person? Do you trust them? Do they trust you? Is it mutual? Is it one-sided? Ask yourself that and understanding where the trust lies can help you also in how you approach the conflict and the tools that you select to use to work on the conflict, you know? So managing it, taking care of our best selves. And once we take care of our best selves and we can show up physically and mentally able to manage conflict, then yes, let's resolve it. And if it can't be resolved, let's manage it so we can thrive in our lives. These are great. These are great. I'm like, I'm, I feel like I'm in a, in a girl talk session with you. I'm like, I'm having so many aha moments. These are great. So I think we're, we're coming down to the end of it. And I want to continue to give just a few more tips and places where people can go um, for more tips on ways they can utilize self-care, ways they can manage their mental wellness, mental health. Um, so like I said, like, like Tabitha also said, if you can't afford it, if um, if that worked out for your situation, you can use therapy. Um, yeah. Talkspace is what I love. Talkspace.com is what I love. But there's also a uh, more affordable um, therapy source called BetterHelp.com. Um, actually, Tabitha, you kind of told me about that, and I started looking at the differences, and and it's pretty good. You know, it's the same. It's similar in in the ways of having it on any device that you need, having a video on call therapist when you need it, and those are great. Um, I also want to mention uh, just finding inspirational quotes. Now, I actually have a book. I have a book. It's called Seeing Life Through a Different Lens. And like I mentioned earlier, um, I am a cancer survivor. So the book itself is a conversation also between myself and my mom, sharing our different perspectives on how it was growing up with the childhood cancer called retinoblastoma. And so in there, there's probably so many gems uh, in there about um, living life more positively. That's why I call it seeing life through a different lens, see life more positively. It's a twist though, because I am a photographer first. So I already kind of see people in a more, more positive light, but then it's like the, taking that twist into my writing. And so there's so many quotes to take away from that. If you just need a short read, it's, it's currently on Amazon at, um, as a Kindle audiobook and a paperback. So if you just need a short read filled with um, inspirational them because sometimes the easiest thing also to manage your mental wellness in difficult times is to think about others because there's always someone who has a situation worse than you. There's always someone who has it worse than you. You are not stuck at home. You get to stay at home, get to be with your family, get to be healthy, choose to eat healthy or, or not, uh, choose to, um, <laughs> you know, to kind of be safe and stay warm, right? So to find, uh, you can use my book as a source to find some inspirational quotes. Of course, um, also, if you follow me on Instagram or anywhere on social media at Illuminous One, um, which is the Arabic meaning of my middle name, I am doing more to kind of give and be and inspire this um, during this time. So I maybe uh, there'll be a quote that, you know, really speak to you as well on my social media. So mm -hmm. what about you, Tabitha? Well, for me, I, one of my favorite quotes centers around conflict management, mm -hmm. conflict resolution. And it's one that I actually wrote myself. We are not powerless in the face of conflict. With the appropriate tool and the knowledge of how, when, where, and why to use them, we can engage in constructive conflict processes to resolve issues, restoring and enhancing relationships. And I think I like it. I sat one time and I thought, what would give people hope? Because conflict management is not necessarily something that people gravitate towards unless there's an issue that they need to take care of. And when they come to me to work with me to take care of those issues, I want to present them with something that gives them hope. And so I sat down and I thought, what would give them hope? And the words, you're not powerless came to me. And that's how I started. We are not powerless in the face of conflict. And that's the way I like to approach it 
so that people understand there's a way to do this. And with help, I can get it done. You know, I do have a gift for our listeners. If you go to Yay, my website, gift for the love language people. Yeah, gift. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gifts affirm some of us. I do have a gift for our listeners. If you go to my website, marshallduke.com, that's Marshall with two L's, duke.com, right at the top of the home page, you can hit that green button and download an ebook with a conflict resolution tip for every day of the month. And if you like my Facebook page, Marshall Duke Consulting, I'm actually going to be going on live a little bit more and going through those and just talking with people and telling them how to use them. So if you grab the book and you hit the like button on the Facebook page, we can go on that journey together. Definitely get that. I, I got it. And it's literally 30 to 31 tips that you can use. Of course, pick and choose you know it's, yeah. it's almost like you can I feel like maybe I'm just jumping ahead of the game Tabitha but I feel like you can make this you know individual like flashcards or, or something you know to put people can really pick it out when they're in conflict and really use it because it has a lot of great tips in there so I love yes. it yes um, I definitely look forward to seeing more of it and where else um, can we find you on social you can find me on Instagram at marshall.duke.consulting and on LinkedIn as Tabitha Library. Okay, yes, I am also on LinkedIn. Um, I need to be on there a bit more, but you can find me <laughs> at Zach Kira <laughs> Mohammed. Um, but I am also, you know, like I said, I, try, I strive to be more inspiring, um, inspiring you to step outside of your comfort zone, inspire you to see life more positively. Uh, at Illuminous One on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I think this is great. Um, this has been great. I think, um, yeah, I think this is this has been absolutely great, and I look forward to um, seeing the comments on the replay. Definitely, yeah. be sure to leave your love for us. Leave, um, tell us what you love the most about um this session and we look forward to reading your comments we look forward to uh seeing you on social media and we hope that we help you to manage conflict a bit better yes thank you so much for having me zakira i'm looking forward to seeing everyone in the comments i'm going to answer as many questions as i can i hope you enjoy the rest of the day and have a wonderful week ahead and we really hope that we were able to provoke your thoughts, inspire you, help you to figure out something about yourself a little better. And we hope that you can come back to our website. I'm going to post the resources. I know Zakira is going to post them also. And you can stay with us on the journey to taking care of ourselves and being better, showing up better and living our best lives. Yes. And you can definitely be sure to share once that, remember, this is uh, the Living Legacy podcast, and you can listen to it over and over and over. You can share it to as many people as you think need it. Uh, please do. We want to continue to impact um, others. And yes. thank you. Thank you so much, Zakira. Thank you, guys. <laughs>